What is meta-level agency? And why do I think it's plausible that we could regulate its development, thereby preventing a dangerous intelligence explosion? That's what I'm going to talk about in this video. In previous videos, I've talked about how the race to build an artificial general intelligence, an AGI, puts us at risk of triggering an intelligence explosion, where the AIs self-improve themselves until they become superintelligences that could choose to dominate or eliminate humanity. This is the risk of extinction that many leaders in the field of AI are warning about by signing the recent joint statement on AI risk. But what they don't say or discuss at all in this general statement is what could actually be done to prevent this existential risk. Now, of course, there are many different aspects of AI development and use that ought to be regulated for a variety of different reasons, each of which would require specific, detailed ways to be regulated. Like, self-driving cars need to be regulated in a very different way from the use of, say, face recognition software. But in this video, I'm just going to be focusing on regulation that might help prevent the most serious existential risks by regulating the development of meta-level agency. But what makes meta-level agency distinct from just regular agency? And how can we know that the current state-of-the-art AI algorithms do not yet have this feature? And how could we successfully regulate the development of this feature? To get answers to these questions, we're going to look at two prominent examples of advanced AI today. Tesla self-driving cars and OpenAI's GPT algorithms. But first, what is meta-level agency? There are many different definitions of agency and ways that different researchers formally define it. But GPT has examined all of our text, so let's look at what GPT-4 has surmised that we mean by the term in the context of artificial intelligence. In the context of artificial intelligence, agency refers to the autonomous capacity of an AI system to make decisions and perform actions towards achieving a specific objective. Now, I'm happy with this definition because it expresses the key aspect that I wanted to highlight. We often use the term agency to refer to AI systems that, while having a fair degree of independence to choose how they act, they are nonetheless trying to achieve goals that have been set for them. In contrast, when I'm talking about meta-level agency, I'm referring to such an open-ended ability to learn and act in the world that the AIs would have the ability to question their highest level goals and to then choose their own goals. And indeed, this is a very human thing to do. We're all interested in different ways to improve ourselves, to get stronger and to understand the world better. And this can lead us to question the implied goals of our upbringing. We can use our meta-level agency to deliberately decide what we want to do with our lives. And this allows us the freedom to adopt radically different high-level goals. And sometimes this can be tragic when people decide to adopt goals that are violent towards others or indeed are self-destructive. But our ability to question and alter our higher-level goals is part of what enables humans to question the existing paradigms of thought to break out of one way of framing the problem and to find another. For example, it's how we realize that we have an option not to play the game. As brilliant as AlphaZero is at playing chess, it would never decide for itself that it wants to do something different, something other than chess. And AI researchers have long been interested in the idea of building AI systems that have this level of open-ended curiosity and awareness of the context in which they are operating. But those funding AI research, corporations, governments, and militaries, they don't want to create free-thinking AIs that could choose their own goals. They want to create tools that will accomplish the specific tasks that need to get done. How can we know that, say, the AI of a self-driving Tesla car won't just develop meta-level agency and then decide to drive off to see the Grand Canyon or whatever? To understand this, we need to take a look at how such autonomous cars learn to get better at driving. 
You might have seen that YouTube is awash with videos of Tesla owners demonstrating the very latest state of Tesla's FSD or full self-driving algorithm. It's quite astonishing. And every release of FSD keeps on improving. So how is it doing this learning? Well, as the cars in the Tesla fleet drive around, they're collecting huge amounts of real world data about driving along all sorts of streets in all sorts of conditions. This data is fed back into the central Tesla data center to be used to further improve the AI. They also use this real world data to generate additional simulated data that allows them to repeatedly test FSD within a range of scenarios that they might not regularly encounter in the real world. That can be everything from going down the same roads in rain, fog, snow, or whatever, through to safety scenarios, like a child walking out into the road. All of this real and simulated data is then used to train a new release of the FSD neural network. This training takes huge amounts of computational power. The new release of FSD can then be thoroughly tested and further improved within simulations. Only once this training process has developed an FSD neural network that passes all of Tesla's safety requirements will this new release be downloaded onto the FSD-enabled cars. Note that exactly the same release version of the neural network is downloaded onto hundreds of thousands of cars that will all go on to use the identical version of this AI self-driving algorithm. The cars then use the new version and generate more feedback training data, and the loop of improvement continues. But notice, the crucial feature of this learning process is that the FSD neural network is not trained on the car. It is trained offline in the data center. Indeed, it is a different algorithm, the backpropagation algorithm, that does the training of the FSD algorithm. This training algorithm is never present on the car. It's not needed there. So there is simply no way that the FSD algorithm running on the car could start learning by itself, let alone learning about itself. And the training algorithm running in the data center requires vast amount of compute and data to do the necessary training. In contrast, the resultant FSD neural network is compact enough that it can be downloaded onto the car and run on the much smaller computer hardware that is viable to have in the car. And because we know all of this about the underlying mechanisms of how the self-driving AI agent is trained, how it learns to drive better, we can be certain that the AI on the car does not have meta-level agency. It is an autonomous agent, yes, but its process of learning is happening elsewhere and is strictly controlled and bounded. And a similar story could probably be said about the AI agent that controls autonomous robots like Digit or Boston Dynamics Spot, and indeed Tesla's Optimus Bot. These robots may at times remind us of our dystopian sci-fi stories. And indeed, there may be other risks from them, but these particular kinds of autonomous AI agents, as currently architected, cannot become dangerous superintelligences by themselves. Now, some might be saying, well, didn't we already know this about specialized AI? The real risk is around generalized AI. Well, I think the specialist generalist distinction is actually being used in at least two very different ways. The first is that people talking about artificial general intelligence are indeed often meaning AIs that would one day have the kind of human style meta-level agency that I'm talking about. But there is also a lot of use of the term general AI to refer to systems that have a generalized ability to perform multiple, very different kinds of tasks. And large language models like the GPT family of algorithms are good examples of this kind of generalist AI. So let's look at a similar architectural analysis of ChatGPT to show why it too doesn't have meta-level agency. So the weird thing about ChatGPT is that even though we seem to be having a conversation with it, 
I would argue that ChatGPT isn't even an agent, let alone being an AI with meta-level agency. To see this, let's look again at the distinction between how ChatGPT is trained versus how it's used. Roughly speaking, there were two phases of training to make ChatGPT. In the first phase, huge amounts of text was used to train a generative pre-trained transformer model to have the core capability of generating a relevant response given a prompt. This training required months of computational work by a massive cluster of computers. Then this network is further refined by a process called reinforcement learning from human feedback, in which, in very basic terms, humans test the generated text from the GPT and score which outputs they consider to be the best and the worst responses. This was a crucial step in improving the quality and appropriateness of the responses from the core GPT algorithm. This core algorithm is then copied onto thousands of servers in order to deliver the ChatGPT user experience in a similar way to which the Tesla FSD algorithm is deployed onto thousands of cars. This deployed version of the GPT algorithm does not then have any further training that happens at use time. That's why there's all this talk about the cutoff time for GPT training being back in September 2021. The core algorithm has done no deep learning since then. Chat GPT is then essentially a user interface that wraps up these deployed copies of the core GPT algorithm. This user interface makes sure that each time you type in a new prompt as part of your conversation, the whole of the history of the conversation also gets passed in to the underlying GPT algorithm. And it's this that gives the end user the illusion of having a back and forth conversation. This also gives the illusion that ChatGPT is learning what you want to talk about. But there are no changes being made to the underlying GPT neural network. And when you do submit a prompt, and then ChatGPT has given you back a response, there's no sense in which it then sits back and thinks about what you've been discussing. While we're thinking about what to say next to ChatGPT, there is no agent, no it, contemplating anything. So yeah, GPT and ChatGPT are incredibly general in what they can do, ranging from computer coding to essay writing to being used as the reasoning engine controlling real and virtual agents. But by itself, ChatGPT isn't an agent. It doesn't have goals that it is autonomously trying to achieve. It is a one-shot process that simply generates responses when you give it a prompt. That's it. So again, by looking at the architecture, we can be confident that ChatGPT cannot by itself undergo an intelligence explosion and become super intelligent. We can know that there is no such existential risk from ChatGPT, despite it having quite impressive general AI capabilities. Now, AutoGPT and other ways in which people have used GPT's capabilities within agents of one kind or another. Now, that's a slightly different story that I'll explore sometime in another video. But I actually don't think that they have meta-level agency either. But here, we still need to look at how what we've learned about the training architectures of ChatGPT and Tesla FSD can inform some thoughts around AI regulation. So, I hope by now I've given a clear sense that it's at least possible to identify types of AI systems that do not possess meta-level agency. From this, I think we can easily imagine three different classes of AI systems that each should be regulated in a different way. The first class is where an architectural analysis can give us confidence that there is no risk of meta-level agency. For example, if, like FSD and ChatGPT, the training of the AI happens in a separate phase from the use of the AI, and there's no further learning or very bounded learning by the deployed AI, then we can have high confidence that these deployed AI systems 
will remain focused on the goals that we have set for them and that their behavior will remain broadly within the bounds of what we have tested for and observed during the training process. Most of the current wave of AI development will easily fit into this class, and I see no reason why this class shouldn't be self-regulated, albeit with a process whereby someone's self-classification could be challenged. There will be plenty of other risks that need other kinds of regulation, but these AI systems are not going to become dominating superintelligences. The second would be the gray area, the class of AI systems where it's not quite clear cut what their status is. Maybe AutoGPT falls into this category. And of course, it's annoying to be suggesting a regulatory approach that has a gray area like this. But at least there are obvious and important classes of AI for which the regulatory approach is very clear. The third class would be systems that are designed to have meta-level agency. Systems that are designed to continuously learn in a truly open-ended way. That means that they could question and update their highest level goals. Like our brain, they wouldn't have the distinction between training and using the AI system. But this means that they would likely need continued access to large amounts of compute, even when deployed into the world. And so, at least currently, such AIs would likely be very expensive to build and operate, which makes them easier to regulate, as not everyone could build such an AI. And their behavior, when deployed, would continue to change in ways that is unpredictable. So it's very unlikely that corporations or governments or militaries would want to build such AIs anyway. So they would probably support the idea of these kinds of AIs being regulated. We can't pretend that, say, the Chinese military want to do this, so we have to. They want powerful AI tools, not to create free-thinking super beings. So I think it really should be plausible to get global agreement to regulate the development of this third class of AI systems. The development of meta-level agency should be regulated at least as seriously as we regulate gain-of-function research into pathogens. They're both at risk of getting away from us and causing huge harm. If the research is going to happen, it should be done in highly secure facilities with proper external oversight of the safety protocols in place. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to suggest that getting such regulation to work would be trivial. My purpose here is to counter any suggestion that regulation is impossible. I want to provide a credible first sketch of a plausible regulatory approach. And also to raise the idea that at this point in time, it's irresponsible for anyone to be trying to develop an AI with meta-level agency. At some point, that will be a fascinating step to take. It is the step of creating a separate being rather than creating a tool but we're not yet ready to be playing God like that. But what do you think about this suggestion? Do you think there are better ways to regulate AI or that regulation is impossible? Please do continue the discussion in the comments below and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching.